So first of all, let's understand why we need certain variants of word and what are the problem existing problems with word. So basically, the first and the foremost problem that we face in word is it consumes a lot of time and resources for training, and it's humongous. Like as you can see, the architecture was also pretty big. Uh, the number of parameters that are to be trained is 110 million parameters. So that's a big, big number. Apart from that, the inference time is also very high. That means ki, uh, when you wish to get some uh, prediction for a particular uh, test data set or like some real world samples, it consumes a lot of time and not very suitable for real world problems. When you need to deploy in system and you are interacting with real value customers. The fourth one being uh, as quoted by some researchers, BERT is a little less efficient and it can it has a big big scope of improvement in terms of both the size as well as the latency in terms of performance as well so let's understand let's expl let's explore few of the prominent variants of word the first and foremost being albert so the uh, basic um, uh, point on which albert improves on word is the size of the, the total number of parameters that word trains so word trains around 110 million parameters but in case of albert it's just nearly 12, uh, 12 million parameters. That is nearly one tenth of the size of the original bird, giving out almost the same results. So how is it achieving that? Let's understand. Uh, basically, it improves on two major points. One is cross parameter sharing. So if you remember in bird, we have six code blocks. Uh, uh, we have uh, 12 code blocks that were getting repeated. Encoder one, encoder two, encoder three, that comprises of the attention layer, the add norm layer, the feed forward network and the uh, attention and normalization layer again. So uh, now uh, what happened, what uh, Albert does is that can all these code blocks, these uh, these neural network blocks that are getting repeated multiple times in word, can they share the same set of parameters? So what is happening actually is that if we have 12 uh, stack of uh, these neural network blocks, one over the uh, like uh, in a sequence, one after another, we are training parameters for each of these blocks separately. So uh, what Albert states that ki if we can go for cross parameter sharing, that means we train just one set of parameters for the for one block and that sh and then share that particular parameter set with other blocks as well. Hence, uh, saving on a lot of parameters uh, that are to be trained. This can reduce the size heavily. So this sharing can be done in multiple ways. All shared. That means weights for both feed forward network and attention layer is shared. So as you can see in the, the four layers that we have in the code block, only two of them are trainable. That is multi-head attention and feed forward network. Because normalization is more of a statistical method and doesn't require any parameters. So uh, either we go for all sharing. That means we share the parameters for both multi-head attention and feed forward layer in all the blocks. Second can be only attention. That means we are sharing the weights for only the multi-head attention layer but not for the feed forward layer or third one being only feed forward layer that means ki we are not sharing uh, the weights for attention layer but sharing the weights for feed forward layer only as you can see in the architecture also there is the feed forward layer there is a multi-head attention the second one being uh, factorizing embedding layer parameterization now what is this this uh, sounds a bit heavyweight so let's understand let's see uh, uh, if you can see in the below image the input embedding that we in, uh, that we uh, later on add on with positional encoding and then feed into this entire encoder section. What what it states that ki as the dimension of the model in case of word is 768. If you remember from my previous video, you need to refer my previous videos for understanding this uh, clearly. Uh, assume that uh, this dimension is pretty high. Now uh, the input embedding size becomes n cross 768. And becomes the total number of words. Now, if we have say 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 words in our vocabulary, the input embedding matrix that we are using in this pink box you can see in the image is 3,000 into 768. This is a big, big matrix. Now, uh, if you have looked closely, if you have uh, like uh, read about BERT and uh, BERT very close in my previous video, you must have understood that uh, this input embedding is not much of use because in the end of the day uh, the output of an encoder is the attention embedding that we are getting for each token and that is uh, of our interest for now Emb input embedding is not much of our interest so can this embedding be reduced like uh, we don't wish to have such a huge matrix for something that is not getting used that much so what uh, has been done is that matrix factorization I think a very common uh, operation that is being used in mathematics so what we are doing is that uh, if you look 
इनपुट एमेंडिंग इक्वल्स टू थ्री थाउजेंड क्रॉस सेवन सिक्सटी एट थ्री थाउजेंड इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स प्रेजेंट इन द सैम्पल अज्यूम दैट थ्री थाउजेंड इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ वर्ड्स प्रेजेंट इट गोज इन टू द इनकोडर एंड द आउटपुट बिकम्स थ्री थाउजेंड इन टू सेवन सिक्सटी एट सो द आउटपुट ऑफ द बर्ड इज ऑल्सो ऑफ द सेम डायमेंशन एज द इनपुट नाउ इन एलबर्ट वॉट वी आर डूइंग इज थ्री थाउजेंड इन टू एन क्रॉस टेम्प एन क्रॉस सेवन सिक्सटी एट वी फीड इन टू द इनकोडर एंड द आउटपुट बिकम थ्री थाउजेंड क्रॉस सेवन सिक्सटी एट what we are eventually doing is that we are doing matrix factorization so this n can be any dimension that is very very less than 768 so eventually in place of training and embedding of 3000 into 768 we are training and embedding of 3000 into something say uh, we are training two matrices 3000 into say 128 into temp 128 into 768 now this, this reduces the size for the input embedding to a very new low Uh, eventually and this can be uh, the operation that can be done to reduce the size of word so basically we are performing two uh, two things one is cross parameter sharing where we are training a uh, weights for each block separately but sharing uh, the weights used in one block with other blocks as well and second is matrix factorization at the input embedding layer where, where what we are doing is that instead of using an embedding of n into 768 what we are doing is that we are training an embedding of n cross m into uh, m cross 760 where n and m are uh, n becomes our total number of vocabulary words and m is some arbitrary word that is very very less than the dimension required hence uh, reducing a computation now let's understand how bert training goes on so uh, it also gets tweaked a bit so in case if you remember in pre training a uh, bert we were using two operations uh, two me two methods one is mlm mass language modeling and other is nsp next sentence prediction a binary classifier whether the next sentence is related to the first or not and in case of mlm what we are doing is that we are randomly masking some tokens in the input token and we are trying to predict what should be the mass token we are training we are pre training bert in that way now in albert what we are doing is that we are following on mlm mlm doesn't change so mass language model remain the same but in case of nsp uh, we are using sentence order prediction that is sop uh, why so so basically the researchers believe that uh, in nsp there are two problems one is topic prediction uh it states that ki assume that we have a sentence uh, he is a boy he is a good football player uh, now if we swap these sentences uh, he is a football player he is a good boy so eventually uh, topic prediction may fail on swapping so it will assume it will still say that ki okay second sentence is related to the first one but actually we have swapped the value so uh, the researchers believe that for swapping we need uh, to incorporate cases such as swapping we need to incorporate some other method called as sop also coherence prediction this can be a little bit of a difficult task because uh, to understand what is the correlation between the two sentences is a difficult task to do in a single go so that is why they have come up with sop sentence order prediction so how sentence order prediction works uh, again uh, if you remember from a last video what we do is that we take out uh, two consecutive sentences and two random se uh, two consecutive sentences in the first one we keep the sequence same and in the next one we are swapping the sequence and we are making the model to predict whether the sequence is correct or not so for example he took an exam it was tough it was tough he took an exam so uh, in the second sentence what we have done is that we have swapped the values uh, the consecutive sentences positions and now we wish the model to predict whether the uh, sequence has been uh, swapped or not yeah yeah this is all for bird